Good morning, good afternoon. Welcome to Cube on the Edge. My name is Ian Jolliffe, and I'm here with my colleague Yolanda. And uh, we're really excited to be talking to you today about our, a GitOps approach to zero touch provisioning for the 5G VRAN Edge. Well, let's maybe start off with uh, introducing each other. Maybe uh, you go first, Yolanda, and then I'll, I'll do the same. Hello, I'm Yolanda Robla. I'm from Spain. I've been working in Red Hat since five years, and I've always been dedicated to open source and cloud. In the latest times, I've been working in Kubernetes and OpenShift, like specialized in, in telcos. And well, I'm working in like using OpenShift uh, for 5G and RAM deployments. Thanks, Yolanda. And again, my name is Ian Jolliffe. I uh, recently joined uh, Red Hat. I'm located in Ottawa, Canada. I've been working in uh, open source projects for the last uh, 10 years and most of my career in, uh, in telecom. Uh, really interested in virtualization, uh, OpenStack, Kubernetes, and other open source projects. So let's dive in. So uh, today what we'll discuss is uh, some of the 5G RAN topologies and challenges, really trying to take uh, those concepts and apply them to infrastructure as code at the edge. Uh, go through some declarative frameworks and workflows uh, for these deployments, and then wrap with a demo. So one of the technologies that we're leveraging is uh, OpenShift. It's really a, a distribution of Kubernetes that comes with things like a registry and many other very important uh, components like networking overlays. So let's look at start by looking at some of the challenging topologies at the at the edge of the network. Um, let's start at the bottom and, and uh, work our way up. So uh, starting with a three node cluster where we have supervisor functions and worker functions on a set of three nodes, uh, this would probably be uh, located in a regional data center, uh, potentially running CU workloads. Uh, up next, we've got where the uh, supervisor nodes are located in the, in the regional data center again but uh, then leveraging uh, remote worker nodes uh, at the edge of the network. And this is the configuration that we're leveraging uh, in our demo. And the third, third uh, topology is really uh, where supervisor and worker nodes are both at the edge of the network. Uh, and this is uh, really our single node edge server uh, configuration. This really helps with low bandwidth or completely uh, remote sites. And that's uh, some work that's going on uh, right now. Another key technology that we're leveraging is uh, Open Cluster Manager. And it uh, uh, really allows you to manage many clusters um, as if you were operating in the, in the core of the network, helps with lifecycle management, policy governance, and uh, advanced lifecycle management uh, concepts like deployment and uh, updates and upgrades. So some of the key uh, considerations at the edge of the network are really about uh, latency uh, from the um, DU to the uh, radio unit. Um, extremely tight tolerances are required for latency in this uh, modality. And so you really need to make sure you're getting the maximum performance out of the servers that are located uh, at the edge of the network. Things like real-time kernel, um, Multis and SROV are key components that we need uh, to think of and deploy at these edge sites. So we're really um, providing a common and automated infrastructure that allows you to manage all these nodes as if they were in the data center. Uh, we've also looked at how to deploy um, with small ISOs so it's easy to bring up and deploy your servers at the edge of the network. So it's really all about making sure that uh, these servers that are in very disparate uh, geographies can be configured and managed as if they were part of a, a, a normal Kubernetes cluster. So let's shift the focus of the conversation today to uh, GitOps. And you know this is the deployment topology that uh, um, we'll be following. Um, and I thought we'd start with a, an industry definition for GitOps. I won't read it all, but uh, the keywords that really resonated were for me are really, it's a set of practices, um, traditionally focused more on application deployment, but we're using GitOps in the context of infrastructure deployment. 
And the other major uh, concept and, and word for me that jumped out was really uh, declarative. So we'll be using uh, YAML and a set of uh, well-known defined patterns to provide a declarative framework for all the infrastructure that we need to deploy and it'll all be stored in Git and be able to uh, be leveraged by um, the uh, open cluster manager technologies that, uh, that we've been talking about earlier. So how do you break this, you know, very complex RAN topology down into uh, into a GitOps and have it all uh, defined as code? Well, it really starts uh, at a high level from a site plan uh, that a telecom operator would have for their mobile network. Uh, we're going to break that down into a set of manifests that can be uh, stored in Git, and then we're going to deploy with zero touch using uh, uh, the uh, open cluster management technology. So it's really important to understand some of the players in this workflow and you know some of the key uh, personas that we identified were um, in the telecom operator side, the uh, uh, planning organization who's responsible for uh, network design, vendor selection and capital planning. And then on to the uh, installation and deployment teams. Um, where they're building out the sites, uh, hiring contractors for the installations, uh, making sure power and physical plant infrastructure is available to uh, these new and interesting servers that are now living uh, further at the edge than they ever have. And then last, lastly, it's really the uh, maintenance and operations team that's really responsible for the day-to-day -day operations, updates and upgrades, and, and the deployments. So really, uh, those are the three personas on the telecom side. So let's look at the um, overall ecosystem that is enabling uh, this new paradigm for uh, for getting compute to the edge. Um, we have uh, the system integrator really pulls together uh, a set of partners and, and the overall ecosystem, uh, integrates orchestration um, and uh, brings together the lower layers of the stack uh, together with the application layers. And they can help the operator consume the site plan and represent the infrastructure as code. Uh, the infrastructure uh, provider persona is really the uh, 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 people providing the platform technology, such as OpenShift and OCM, Open uh, Cluster Manager, and, and also deploying the uh, high performance profiles to make sure that the workloads can operate uh, these strict um, VRAN workloads. And then lastly, we have the application provider that's really providing a 5G RAN application or a 5G core application. So very diverse ecosystem is now coming to play uh, to enable these new 5G um, RAN applications at the edge. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Yolanda. Okay, so I will explain how the workflow uh, for this GitOps approach is working. Our source of truth is uh, just a, a set of Git repos where we are containing what we call a site planning. And a site planning is just a, a definition, a set of YAML files that are containing all the different settings for the clusters that we want to deploy. So we will include things related to the cluster, like uh, the cluster name, domain, like IP ranges. And we also have uh, like definitions for the hardware, like for the, for the environmental host. We can just uh, provide details on the VMC, static network definitions as well. So we have this data with the site plan. And then we are combining that with uh, other, param uh, other manifests that are defining the, the Kubernetes ma manifest operators that we want to deploy in all the clusters. Uh, like we give the clusters a set of roles. We, we tell which manifest do we want to use. Everything uh, with that is combined with customize and we are producing Using like uh, the final output, like it will be a, a YAML definition of all the, um, the settings and all the, the things that needs to be applied on the, on the clusters. When we have this YAML, we are just applying, passing that to OCM, to Advanced Cluster Management. This is consuming it, and as soon as the clusters are joining and enrolling into ACM, it will be just be applying all the different operators, the different configurations that we have just told in our site plan. Uh, so we, we end with clusters, finally configure it and deploy it with our settings. Okay. 
Okay, uh, so I'm going to explain a bit the, the operators and all the layers that we are uh, doing for our cluster provisioning and definition. So we start with the base components. We assume that we are starting with uh, servers that don't have any operating system in standard that just are bare from the, the factory. So we start by provisioning them with the operating system that is CoreOS. On top of that, we're installing the OpenShift container platform. So when that is completed, the, the node, the worker node, will join into an existing cluster. Once it happens, we we'll start applying the 5G RAM profile that is composed by a set of operators. So we start with machine configs that are just for enabling like system definitions, uh, low level settings at system level, like we enable NTP, SCTP, things like that. Uh, second, as uh, the 5G is very important to have good performance, we are using the uh, performance add-on operator that is taking care of that. So it will install real-time kernel on the nodes that need it. It will just define the, the number of CPUs, the cost we reserve, the number of huge pages as well, depending on our workloads. After that, we also need to, to just interact with uh, low-level network uh, functions. So we want to consume directly the, the network uh, functions from the card. So we are using the salary operator. Uh, this will allow us to just use the physical function and the virtual functions for every NIC. And also on the DUs, where we need uh, like very, very good time synchronizations, we are using PTP, that is Precision Time Protocol. So uh, Open Cluster Management will be installing that as well. Okay, thanks. OK, uh, so finally, I'm going to explain a bit how the deployment process looks like. Uh, so we start, as we were telling, with uh, everything in, in Git, like we have the site plan in Git in what we call the regional data center. We have a cluster with open cluster management installed there. And then we can apply our GTP, and it will be used to deploy different types of clusters. So we can just deploy like uh, clusters with a control plane and remote worker nodes. Uh, so that will be one use case. Another use case will be single node where we can just uh, use it for the use or it's just a, a server with masters and workers at the same the same host. And also we can have a CU pool that we are using three masters that have also the, the roles of workers. So uh, this uh, CTP is able to just deploy clusters with th these different topologies depending on our site definition. Up to you. Yeah. That's great, Yolanda. Thanks very much for uh, walking us through that. I really like how we can start with uh, the infrastructure uh, site plan, apply the customized overlays, uh, then wrap those uh, that overall picture in policies that can be uh, then leveraged by the Open Cluster Manager. So let's uh, let's dive in and see uh, see the demo that we have here. Hello, so let's start with the demo. As I was explaining before, everything starts with a site plan. A site plan is just a set of YAML files that are stored into a Git repo and that contains the information needed for deploying of a massive number of clusters. So you can see here what I'm talking about. For each cluster, we have their settings, uh, the name of the cluster, the domain, the version, some network settings as well, like the ingress and the API beep. Uh, well, then we can define the control plane, entries for the control plane here, uh, where we explain the number of masters, the, the MAC addresses of the masters as well. And then we define the workers as well. Workers are the remote worker nodes that are going to join after the control plane is deployed. So for each worker, we define the VMC details, like the, the address, user and password. So with that, everything is translated to just some Ansible inventories. And from there, we start the deployment of the cluster. Okay, so next thing, I want to show how to configure static networking for the workers. Uh, what you need to provide is just a, a file, a YAML file, that will contain all the network configuration in NMState format for all your worker nodes. Okay? So you can see here that we have a list of interfaces. Each interface uh, is belonging to a worker node. As it's consuming NM state, you are free to define the kind of network that you want, like VLAN, bonding, 
Okay, so next thing is creating the cluster. You can see that simply we are just to going to run the next tag in the playbook. It will just create a cluster in the, using the OpenShift assisted service. Okay, you can see here, this is the assisted uh, installer, web user interface. And you can see that we have just created a new cluster with the settings that I passed on my inventory. It is using 4.7. You can see it matching the cluster name, the cluster domain. Okay, so the step finally just finished and you can see that we have three nodes just enrolled into a system installer. And with once we have just three nodes, we can start with installation of the OpenShift cluster. It will just uh, set up some settings and just show the order of deploying the cluster and it will just wait. Okay, after some time, the cluster has been installed. You can see here that you have the three masters showing us installed with all the details. And now it's time to just uh, add the remote worker nodes. I'm starting to show you how the server is reacting. It's okay, so you can see that it has been powered on and we are telling them instructions to boot from virtual media. It starts to use the, to mount the image that it has downloaded and it will just complete the provisioning step now. Okay, you can see that the nodes start to report up to assistant installer. We will have two worker nodes that will be joining. As you have seen, the nodes are already enrolled in the assistant installer. So next thing is to deploy the cluster. So it. You have seen that the, the workers are starting the installation. Okay, so you have seen that the, finally the worker nodes are enrolled into the cluster. So we have a working uh, Kubernetes cluster with a master control plane and two remote worker nodes. So we have this repo that is called GTP ACM manifest and it contains all the objects that are going to be applied into advanced cluster management. Everything is uh, here is working in a GitHub way and everything is controlled by just Kubernetes manifest and CRDs. Here is uh, how our basic layer is composed. So we have common. Common is just the, the base, base manifest that are going to be applied to all clusters. Then we have profile that we are going to use it to configure clusters depending on the function they have. Like we can have an additional layer that is hardware type that we can configure clusters depending on the type of hardware. And finally, we have the size that is a specific configuration at site level. Everything in ACM is working via subscriptions. A subscription is just a, an object that is telling ACM that it needs to listen to a specific uh, repository or to a specific folder. Okay. So here, for example, you can see that we have the subscriptions for common base. Everything is composed mostly of namespace, channels, subscriptions, and applications. And you can see that the subscriptions are just pointing to another repo. Our RAM manifest that is actually having the source of truth of all the configurations. And we have the same. You can see that we are matching the, the structure that we had in ACM subscriptions with the CTP RAM manifest. Okay, you can see here that everything is based on a policy. A policy is just a, an object definition of ACM that is informing how it needs to configure, the, which object that does it needs to create into the cluster. And it is just simply creating the operator. Okay, yeah. I'm telling, I want to create this object in all clusters and I'm just going to create an object that installs a SLV operator. After a policy, there is also what it calls placement bindings and placement rules. So the placement rule allows you to define to where do you want to apply this policy. So in our case, we are applying the policy in all types of, of clusters. In this case, for example, we are just applying all the configurations to all the clusters that are rolled roll as DU. And then we can have the side policies as well that are specific things that needs to be configured at site level. Like for example, bilans, name of NICs. So, so things that needs to be configured at state level, for example, are the, the NIC selectors, like 
you need to exactly match the name of the interface here. So it needs to be at site level. And everything in ACM is just configured into this in this way. This is just, just a default ACM installation. And on this installation, I have applied all the manifests that we ha you have shown in the ZTP ACM manifest repo. You remember that I have been showing that we have different layers and we have created subscriptions based on that. So you can see here the run subscription, hardware type, the profile, and the sites. When a subscription is applied, it's actually creating all the objects that we are pointing to into the and to the, and the folder of the Git repo. So you can he see here the final outcome of that. We have the common run subscription that is the, um, the main object that we created into ACM. This was pointing to the ZTP run manifest matching folder that contained some policies, placement bindings and placement rules. So you can see here how ACM is just applying all the different objects. What I'm showing now is how a cluster is enrolled into ACM. This is pressing. You can also see that it, the cluster has some labels that is profile DU. It means that it will apply all the workloads that are matching with the DU profile, and this is being defined for the placement rules that I created. Okay, and you can see that everything is installed properly. It is ACM is monitoring the status of the cluster. It shows the version, name of the cluster, the profile, the number of nodes. You can see that it doesn't have any application, and this is anything you can see that there are policies that have not yet been applied. When a cluster joins ACM, it, uh, ACM automatically recognizes that and tries to start reconciling all the changes that are needed to configure the cluster automatically. This is, you remember that the, this is managed via policies. So we have several policies that are defining the kind of objects, uh, manifest, that needs to be applied on the cluster. And then ACM is matching those uh, policies with the, the rules that we define it and decides where to apply. This is prone to change and we are just working on a, a final version everything, where everything will be integrated. So no need to run manual, manual and serial playbooks. Everything will just be defined on the Git repo, including the cluster definition, worker, hardware, the hardware settings for all the, the clusters. And the procedure will be just automatically reading all the information from Git and applying the procedure that you have seen here with Assistant Installer and ACM to configure all the needed clusters. Thanks, Yolanda. That was a great demo. Um, really enjoyed that. Great job. Um, really had a great time uh, doing this with you. And uh, let's open it up uh, to questions. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you.